UKIP's votes will fall compared with the European results at the next general election. Remember, on the same day, we had two separate elections. The European elections, when UKIP came top with 27%, and local elections in, in much of England, where they got 17%. So it was already clear that the European election vote was very specific to that election and that issue. Uh, you got, we currently have UKIP on around 13, 14%. Uh, I would expect that to fall further between now and uh, next May's general election. The issue is how much further will it fall. If it sticks at around 10 or 11%, that is bad news for the Conservatives because the biggest chunk of UKIP votes comes from people who voted Conservative in 2010. On the other hand, if the UKIP vote gets really squeezed down to 5 or 6%, and especially if it gets heavily squeezed in the Conservative Labour marginals, that's good news for the Conservatives. At present, I think it's unlikely that either Conservative or Labour will have an overall majority. It's possible there's still nine months to go till um, the election, but I think by far the likeliest outcome is, in technical terms, a hung parliament, that is neither Conservative nor Labour, reaching the 326 seats they need to have uh, more MPs than all the other parties combined. However, if either party can get to around 312, 315 seats, um, then I think they might have a shot at forming a minority government and rather than a coalition. Um, I think David Cameron would have difficulty persuading his own backbenchers to accept another coalition with the Liberals unless he, the arithmetic meant he really, really had to. If he could run as a minority government, then I think he would. Um, and you've got to remember that it's not just Conservative, Labour and Liberal. There are also nationalist MPs and the Northern Ireland MPs and there'll probably be eight or nine uh, MPs from the Democratic Unionist Party and all the signs are that they would give a fair wind to a minority Conservative government. They wouldn't be part of the coalition but they'd support a Conservative minority government on the big votes. So even if we get a hung parliament that doesn't necessarily mean we'll have another formal coalition. Whenever we at YouGov ask people who would make the best Prime Minister, uh, David Cameron trounces Ed Miliband. Uh, the current margin is about 15 percentage points, even though Labour's slightly ahead still on voting intention. Um, bluntly, people don't think Ed Miliband's strong enough. They don't think he's up to the job. Now, that isn't necessarily on its own fatal. There have been elections in the past where the less popular party leader has won the election most notably Margaret Thatcher in 1979. She was behind Jim Callaghan, the Labour Prime Minister. But in that election, you just had the winter of discontent which had destroyed public faith in Labour, and the Conservatives were seen as the party that uh, would strengthen the economy. What you've got today is both Cameron ahead of Miliband on Best Prime Minister, and the Conservatives well ahead of Labour, as the party that's best on the economy. And while you can win an election if you're behind on leadership or the economy, there's never been a case in British history, since polling's been around, which is what, 60, 70 years, when a party has won an election being behind on both leadership and the economy. I think life's going to be pretty tough for the NHS. It's already quite tough because the form of protection it's had has not really allowed for uh, the increasing demand on NHS, the demographic changes with more older people, uh, costlier drugs and treatments and so on. So it's already been a bit of a squeeze. Um, and I don't think the NHS can expect uh, that squeeze to lessen in the years ahead, whether Labour or Conservative uh, uh, lead to the next government. The only scenario in which you might get some short-term relief for the NHS is if there's a big flu epidemic this coming winter because uh, the governments can't afford there to be stories of hospitals collapsing under the strain 
of a flu epidemic. So in the immediate months before the election, I think any change in attitudes to NHS spending will be driven by the short-term, highly political considerations rather than by a long-term strategic judgment. If interest rates rise before the election, it'll only be a slight rise, probably half a percent to three quarter percent. Um, so I don't think on its own it'll have a big effect. And if it does have an effect, oddly enough, it might help the Conservatives. Because although the stories on the news, whenever people talk about interest rates, are about you know, homeowners and mortgage payments going up, there are more people who have savings than who have mortgages. And people who have savings or are about to retire and want to have an annuity, higher savings rates are good news for them. And of course, older people who have the savings vote in higher numbers than younger people. So um, before we get on to the longer term economic effects, when it slowed down investment and so on in industry, the immediate effect, well, I think be small, but if anything, slightly helpful to the Conservatives.